Hey guys, this is Sean P. Having explored 5,000 restaurants in Seoul, I'm so excited to share some fantastic off the beaten path dining recommendations with you. So let's check them out before the Michelin guy catches on. Wow, can you see that? I've arrived at a restaurant where you can dine like a king. When you arrive here, you can join the waiting list by entering your local phone number like this. You'll receive a text message notification when it's your turn. The restaurant owner is broadcasting welcoming messages to the guests like a radio DJ. It's nice to feel the sincerity towards the guests. This item, the sakat, is what gives this restaurant its name, Kim Sakat. It's a traditional Korean style hat. Outside the restaurant, you can also warm yourself by the fire while waiting. There's a waiting room inside as well. <laughs> oh, my waiting number has been called. As I entered the restaurant, they guided me to my table. Love the window seat. The natural light here is pretty nice. There's only one menu, so you don't need to order separately. Check this out. Wow. These endless dishes keep coming. The set menu, consisting of 30 side dishes, pumpkin porridge, boiled pork slices with kimchi, soybean paste stew, and grilled crocker, cost just 21,000 won or 15 US Look how many dishes we have here. Wow. Excluding boiled pork slices and fish, it's a healthy option that even vegetarians and vegans can enjoy. Now let's dig in. Pumpkin porridge, boiled pork slices with kimchi, a corn jelly, braised quail egg, soy meat, brown seaweed, chives, fern, rice cake, chapche, balloon flour, mushroom, radish, seaweed stem, various seasoned vegetables, soybean paste stew, grilled crocker tofu fish cake tree ear mushroom kimchi spinach mung bean sprout tteokbokki corn salad fresh tofu bean sprout broccoli garlic stem and finally fried seaweed the various seasoned vegetables side dishes are refillable and they are brought directly to you by serving robots like this. You can enjoy each type of vegetable as a side dish, but it's also great to make bibimbap like I did. Don't forget to try the shike or sweet rice drink served as a dessert after the meal. It's delicious. So be sure to have some. This is Hanmyo that is rapidly gaining popularity with their dazzling visual performances. Let's go inside. You can feel the Korean vibe from the entrance. Since it's always crowded in the evening, I visited as a walk-in for lunch on a weekday. The interior exudes a traditional Korean vibe. At your table, you can use a tablet to place your food order in Korean, English, Japanese, and Chinese. I'm going to order the signature dish of this restaurant, the chadol gujolpan or beef brisket plate. The side dishes and seaweed soup come out first. And now, chadol gujolpan has arrived. It's served on a Korean traditional cauldron lid flipped upside down with beef brisket wrapped around water parsley. As the staff begins to cook the beef with a gas torch, it becomes a spectacular fire show. Truly a feast for the eyes. After the beef is cooked moderately, the water parsley, scallops, bean sprout, firm break, and kimchi are cooked in the beef brisket oil in sequence. Oh, the delightful aroma and sizzling sound. My mouth is already watering. The egg mixture is poured over it. The egg is cooked again with a gas torch until it's set, and then it's mixed in to make egg custard. Finally, when the previously put on lid is lifted, the egg custard is ready to eat. Wow, what a visual delight. So, this is how you eat it. Grab a sliced buckwheat pancake and put the cooked beef brisket, scallops, 
water parsley, kimchi, bean sprout, and firm break. And a bit of grilled eggs. Now cram the whole thing into your mouth and enjoy its taste. Mmm. The richness of the beef is balanced perfectly by the refreshing taste of water parsley and kimchi, while the firm break and bean sprout add an extra layer of savory flavor. Nearly perfection. It's very tasteful. After finishing your beef brisket plate, make sure to order the soybean paste soup with rice. It will be cooked and served on the pot lid as well. I order a Coke and guess what? Even here, a serving robot brought it to me. What an advanced country Korea is. Wow, can you see this endless long line? These people are lined up to enter the restaurant I'm about to introduce. Before we continue, here's the news. In this video, I've curated a selection of unique places based on different themes. If you're seeking more information about hidden gem restaurants in Seoul, I've compiled a list of the top 100 restaurants into an ebook. Feel free to check it out for reference. Mongtan is the most notorious restaurant in Seoul where you have to wait for an average of over 3 hours just to get in. To avoid this wait, I came at an odd time on a weekday at 4 p.m. and I was able to enter right away. Staff are preparing and grilling the ribs at an open kitchen near the entrance. The table setting with the side dishes has been already prepared. Put your clothes in these large bags provided at each table and you can prevent the smell of food from sticking to your clothes. Now let's order from the menu. I've ordered the signature dish here, the straw grilled galbi or short rib and onion fried rice. The short rib is 32,000 won or 23 US dollars for one serving and the onion fried rice is 5,000 won or 3 US dollars. For the basic side dishes, there are dongchimi or radish water kimchi, onion kimchi, ice radish kimchi, and myeonginamo or wild leek. This is a cauldron lid and placing it like this helps the meat oil to flow down to the sides. I'm putting on a disposable apron. In Korean restaurants, these aprons are commonly used to prevent food from splattering onto clothes. Wow! The huge short rib has finally arrived. Because the meat is grilled over burning rice straw when served, it's much smokier and flavorful. The giant short rib is dissected and prepared by the staff. Listen to this sizzling sound. The aroma and sound are very appetizing. Let me take a bite. Guys, this is why people flock to this restaurant. Come try yourself. This is the best beef short rib in entire Seoul. Very chewy and juicy. The grilled rice cake is crispy and delicious too. Wrapping the meat in myeonginamol or a wild leek is also one way to enjoy Korean style barbecue. Look at the size of this huge rib. The staff meticulously spreads the remaining meat on the grill. This ice radish kimchi is a real delicacy. It's cool and spicy, complementing the rich flavor of the meat. Dongchimi is also refreshing, almost like drinking Sprite. The onion fried rice is served. The fried rice spread out like a pancake in the pot lid is also delicious, so be sure to try it together. Wow, can you see those igloos floating on the Han River? People are grilling meat in this beautiful spa with a great view. This is the Waikiki Market located on the Han River dock. I made a reservation for my visit. The pork barbecue lunch is 29,000 won or 21 US dollars per person and dinner is 34,000 won or 25 US dollars. After payment, they give you a basket with all the barbecue items. Just take it to your assigned seat. Oh, the atmosphere is already lovely. 
Guys, feel this view, music, and vibe. The view from the second floor is better than the first. Inside the dome, there are radiators. Despite the freezing cold weather outside today, it's warm enough here. Let's check out the basket. It includes meat, marshmallows, shrimp, pineapple, side dishes, sausage, rice cakes, vegetables, and water. Barbecue utensils are also provided. I headed back down to the first floor to buy noodles, Dalgona candy, and goldfish bread kits. Each kit costs 3,000 won or 2 US dollars and comes with all the cooking ingredients and tools. Back at my seats, the charcoal grill is ready. Let's start the barbecue. First, I'll grill the meat, then the sausage, shrimp, and vegetables. It feels more special barbecuing while enjoying this beautiful scenery. The meat looks very appetizing. I've also grilled the marshmallows. Now, let's try them. I'll keep the meat warm using this mini grill. Let me try by wrapping it in lettuce. Oh, it's delicious. The best thing about Korean barbecue is not just eating meat, but also wrapping it with various vegetables, making it a balanced meal. You can also cook noodles yourself here. Just put the noodles and powder in a bowl, place it on the cooker, and it boils automatically. Oh, it smells so good! Wow! Eating noodles outdoors and with meat is tasty. Now, let's make Dalgona candy, which was also featured in Netflix Squid Game. As the instruction manual is in Korean, you can follow my steps instead. It's quite a challenging process. First, melt the sugar slowly until it turns transparent. Add a little baking soda and mix until it turns brown. Then pour the mixture onto a plate and let it cool for a moment. Then press it down like this. Next, place a mold cutter on top of the dalgona and press again. Ta-da! Let's bite! Let's also make the iconic Korean street food goldfish bread. The mold is crucial here. After heating the fish-shaped mold, pour an appropriate amount of flour batter. Then add red bean paste and cream filling. Pour more batter on top, close the mold and cook it thoroughly on both sides. It's done. <laughs> the mysterious restaurant I'm heading to offers up to 9 dishes for just $18 or 25,000 won. But I have no idea what types or how many dishes I'll get. I'm dying to find out, so let's go in. I arrived early, so it's still quiet, but it'll get lively soon. Oh, here comes the first dish. Wow, have you seen anything like this? It's called kwamegi, a fish dish wrapped in cabbage and dipped in samjang. Dang, here comes the second dish already. It's like squid pancake. Before we dig in, let me tell you another way to enjoy kwamegi. Wrap it in seaweed or dip it in vinegar red chili pepper sauce. It's so refreshing. You can dip the squid pancake in the seasoned soy sauce like this. But to be honest, this dish is just okay. Now, we have yusansu. Look at that hot steam. Yusansu is a dish made by dicing ingredients such as meat, seafood, and vegetables and simmering them in starch. This restaurant interpreted it well and made it delicious. Though my wife and I don't usually drink alcohol, we felt like having beer today. Cheers! It goes so well with today's dishes. 
Next up is busam. It's boiled pork eaten wrapped in kimchi or a fermented steak. The combination of the meatiness of the pork and the spiciness of the kimchi is divine. And then there's b u d e j i g e It's a dish that originated from the Korean War, combining American army supplies like ham and sausage with Korean kimchi and red pepper paste. I'll tell you more about it next time. Auntie just told us that only five dishes are served today. So the b u d e j i g e was the last one. Oh no. I was unlucky. I missed out on the maximum of 9 dishes. Please share your experience when you visit instead. The first place to introduce is Suadang. It's a kimbap restaurant and wow! They have such a diverse menu. This place is one of the most famous kimbap restaurants in Seoul, known for its wide variety of menu options and big size kimbap rolls. You can order through the kiosk here and they have an English menu. They also offer vegan kimbap. You can only take it to go here, so dining in isn't available. We went to a nearby convenience store and ate at the outside table. Wow! Look at this visual! Unlike regular kimbap, these are packed with various toppings and look very appetizing. This one is called c h a r a n g kimbap, which is cheese and egg kimbap. This one is pork belly kimbap. Oh wow! It's so delicious! Next up is basil shrimp kimbap. Oh, the combination of basil and shrimp is very unique but incredibly fresh and tasty. Highly recommended. And this one is salmon kimbap. You can really feel that all the ingredients are fresh. Instant cup noodles and kimbap are a beloved combination. They go perfectly together, so be sure to try enjoying them like this. In this residential alley, you wouldn't expect to find the restaurant, but here it is. And it's not just any restaurant, it boasts this extensive view. This is Cafe Donut Jeongsu, where you can taste Korean style donuts. The large windows overlooking the Seoul view and the traditional Korean interior are impressive. You can place your order downstairs where you'll find various creative donuts. They are priced at around 4,000 won or 3 US dollars each. Let's start with the Tarak Donut. Can you see the rich milk cream inside? It's so deliciously sweet. Look at this adorable banana. It's a chocolate banana donut. The combination of coffee and donuts is excellent. This one is called Suk or Mugwort chocolate donut, which I've never seen before. Wow, look at this generous feeling of Suk cream. Oh, this is my favorite. While all the donuts are delicious, This one in particular offers an outstanding combination of chocolate sweetness and souk's bitter flavor, creating a unique blend of Korea and the world. I highly recommend enjoying this experience of creative donuts and coffee while taking in this fantastic view. I've come to the birthplace of kopap, a recently trending Korean dish even in the United States. In this area filled with academies, kopap started being sold to students as a quick and affordable meal solution. And now, it has evolved into a street filled with various stalls. However, today being Monday and very cold, many k o p a p shops are closed, but typically, a variety of k o p a p options are available. At this shop, giving off delicious smells, I ordered the spicy cheese chicken and grilled pork belly k o p a p It cost $3 or 5,000 won. The impressive fire show catches the eye. It's a truly Korean style fast food that's prepared in a minute. Wow, look at that portion. A hearty meal for just $3. It's delicious, filling, and affordable. Isn't that great? This place not only offers k o p a p but also various other street food items like waffles, fish cakes, tteokbokki, fish-shaped bread, ice cream, noodles, etc. All providing generous portions at low prices. It is a place worth trying, even as a choice. Let me introduce a unique restaurant tailored for vegans. There's no signboard at the entrance, only a QR code. There's also a space to wash hands before eating, displayed like an exhibition in one corner of the store. This is a fusion Korean dining establishment that offers a course meal. 
Scanning the QR code reveals the sequence of the course and description of each dish. The price is $22 or 30,000 won per person, which is very reasonable given the course composition. First, a pre-meal tea was served, followed by the first and second courses. The visually stunning dishes were cabbage salad and candied sweet potatoes. Despite not being vegan myself, I found these unique dishes to be pleasantly tasty. Then came the third, fourth, and fifth courses, braised radish and fried tofu rice, fried peppers and soybean paste seaweed pasta. As a food enthusiast who has explored over 5,000 restaurants in Seoul alone, I found these vegan dishes to present a unique fusion, providing a delightful experience of distinctive flavors. Overall, the food was well-balanced and not overly seasoned, aligning perfectly with the essence of healthy vegan cuisine. Finally, we concluded the course meal with the sixth dessert, matcha cake tangerine, which was delightful. If you want to experience traditional Korean desserts in a Hanok house, I highly recommend this place. It's quite popular, so there's usually a wait. But we were able to get in after a short wait. The small garden outside the window is charming. I ordered pumpkin steamed rice cake, Jeju dried tangerines, and a cup of persimmon leaf tea. The heaty floor is warm here. Let me tell you about the unique features of a hanok while waiting for our food. Hanok has a balanced combination of ondol heating for warmth and wooden floors for cooling, along with tiled roofs to keep out the rain. It is indeed a beautiful and scientifically designed architectural form. The tea and desserts arrive, and the staff kindly explain how to enjoy the tea. Sipping tea while gazing at the garden courtyard feels like paradise. The dry tangerines with honey sauce are a delightful discovery, offering a perfect blend of tangy, citrus, and sweet honey. It pairs wonderfully with the tea. Next came the pumpkin steamed rice cake. Oh, it looks beautiful with its steam rising. It has a savory, wholesome flavor that perfectly complements the tea. They refill the water for the tea so we can continue enjoying it. It's easy to see why this place is so popular. It truly is a tea drinking paradise. Lastly, let me introduce you to Banyongsan, a North Korean restaurant specializing in Hamgyong province cuisine. This place offers a variety of dishes from North Korea. It's already gained fame through numerous TV shows and newspapers as a popular local eatery. For those interested in learning more about North Korea or the division between North and South Korea, you can check out the video card in the top right corner. I tried their signature dishes, karikukbap, a type of rice soup, and bibin naengmyeon, cold noodles mixed with spicy sauce. This restaurant is the only place in Seoul where you can try karikukbap, this one. To enjoy it, start by savoring the broth. Wow. Then mix in the toppings. And finally add the red sauce for an extra kick. As for the bibim naengmyeon, you first cut the noodles with scissors, then mix in some sesame oil and sauce before eating. It's very chewy and tasteful. The brew served with the cold noodles is absolutely delightful. Its rich and deep flavor adds a pleasant touch to the noodles making the whole experience thoroughly enjoyable. So guys, this is it. I've included the information about the restaurant featured in this video in the comment section below. So be sure to take a look for your reference. I'll continue to bring you helpful information, so stay tuned. <laughs>